Hello everyone, back again with movie and tune recap. Today, I'm going to explain an American science fiction sci-fi film from 2010, titled Skyline. Spoilers ahead, so watch out and take care. As the movie begins, we witness blue lights falling from the sky like flares, showering Los Angeles at night, spaced out across the landscape. Meanwhile, a young couple, Jared and Elaine, awaken to the blue lights outside their window, shining through the blind slats. Elaine, mistaking it for morning, heads to the bathroom feeling nauseous. Upon returning to bed, the room begins to shake, prompting Jared to investigate by lifting the blinds. However, his curiosity is interrupted by an anguished cry from the next room, where Denise is in tears, claiming the lights took Ray. As Jared heads towards the source of distress, he notices blue light seeping into the room. Suddenly, Jared's attention is captured by the glowing blue light, causing strange blue-black veins to sprout across his eyes, cheekbones, and shoulders, while his eyes become cloudy and opaque. Terry and Candace, also disturbed by the lights, join them in the living room, where Jared, seemingly entranced, starts moving towards the glowing spectacle. Fifteen hours earlier, Jared and Elaine heads to Los Angeles after flying from New York to celebrate Terry's birthday. Terry, their childhood friend who now thrives working at a special effects company, arranges for a limo to pick them up from the airport. Upon arrival at Terry's apartment, they're shown to their room and introduced to Candace, Terry's girlfriend, and Denise, his personal assistant. After settling in, Terry gives them a tour of the place before they head to the building's swimming pool to kick off the celebration with drinks and revelry. As Jared and Terry indulge in the festivities, Elaine, Candace, and Denise observe their antics like amused spectators. They take note of Homeland Security helicopters hovering over the building and the nearby marina. That evening, everyone gathers to celebrate Terry's birthday with a lavish party at his penthouse apartment. Amidst the revelry, Oliver, the building manager, pays them a visit to request keeping the noise down due to complaints from other residents. During the festivities, Ray, one of Terry's business associates, inadvertently reveals Terry's desire for Jared to relocate to Los Angeles and join him in the visual effects field. While Jared appears hesitant, Elaine reacts with anger and left. Later, she confides in Jared, disclosing her pregnancy, which unsettles him as he feels unprepared for such a responsibility. Jared and Elaine find out about Terry's infidelity with Denise, his personal assistant. On day one, the scene unfolds with the blue lights falling from the sky once again, one of them landing in the courtyard outside the high-rise apartment building, where Ray is snatched away, this time seen from Denise's perspective. As they pull Jared away from the lights, the painful process of the vanishing veins begins, impairing his vision temporarily, and eventually, the blue flares ascend back into the night sky. As the group grapples with the mysterious events, the building starts trembling. Terry peers through the blinds, and notice something unusual outside. He and Jared decides to ascend to the rooftop to investigate the situation. Armed with his revolver, Terry leads the way while Jared carries his camera. Along the way, they encounter Terry's elderly neighbor, Walt, accompanied by his dog, and advise him to return to his apartment for safety. Back inside the apartment, the women attempt to gather information about the unfolding events. However, all television channels fail to receive signals, and news broadcasts display vacant studio sets. Elaine attempts to contact her mother in New York but reaches only her voicemail. As they stood on the rooftop, they noticed the city below was quiet. Jared, without thinking, let the security door shut behind him, trapping them on the roof. As dawn approached, they observed massive clouds approaching Los Angeles, accompanied by flashes of blue lightning, and suddenly, blue flare lights descended back to the ground from the clouds. From within the clouds emerged a fleet of large alien spaceships, each of different shapes and sizes, spreading across the city. These ships began to absorb clouds of dust, and Jared grabbed his Canon EOS camera to capture the scene. To their horror, they realized that the clouds were actually countless screaming humans being drawn into each ship by blue lights resembling vacuums. Amidst the chaos, 
dozens of smaller alien drones flew out from the ships, swarming all over the city. One of these drones appeared over the rooftop, its ray-like blue light nearly catching the group. In a desperate attempt to re-enter the building, Terry fired at the door handle, but it remained shut. However, Elaine arrived just in time and opened the door from the inside, rescuing them. Unfortunately, she looked into the blue light of the flying alien drone and became affected, veins appearing on her skin. Jared quickly carried her back to the apartment along with Terry. As everyone examined the images, they were horrified by what they saw. Candace, while browsing through the rest of the pictures on the camera, discovered shots of Terry and Denise engaging in intimate activities. Though angered, she kept her feelings to herself. Looking through the telescope, the group noticed that there were no lights, ships, or aliens present over the ocean. Terry proposed a plan to drive to the marina, board his boat, and escape from the city. Initially, Elaine tried to convince everyone to stay put in the apartment and wait for help, but eventually, she yielded and agreed to Terry's plan. Terry headed to Walt's apartment to retrieve his keys, intending to have two cars for their escape plan. While conversing with Walt, a flying alien drone hovered outside the window, extending tentacles into the room to search. Walt's incessantly barking dog alerted the drone to their presence, leading to Walt and the dog being seized and drawn up by the flying drone. Terry managed to escape, securing the Mercedes keys in the process. Returning to his apartment, Terry gathered the others, and they descended via the elevator to the underground parking garage, preparing for their getaway. Terry and Denise takes Terry's Ferrari, while Candace drove Elaine and Jared in Walt's Mercedes. As they made their way out, they encountered a quarreling couple, Colin and Jen, who were also loading their car, attempting to escape the building. Terry's car exited the parking lot first, only to be crushed by a colossal alien standing over 20 feet tall. Tragically, Denise lost her life in the collision, while Terry was thrown from the vehicle and tries to get away. Ineffectively, he fired his weapon at the towering alien, known as the Stompy Tanker. Jared courageously leaped out and dragged Terry to safety, but the Stomping Tanker retaliated by extending a long, multi-tongued appendage, pulling Terry back into its grasp, seemingly consuming him. Elaine swiftly pulled Jared back into the car, and Candace reversed while the stomping alien tries to get into the car park. As they hurried back into the garage, they came face to face with a peculiar alien life form with multiple blue eyes, resembling a fusion of the aliens from the biomechanical flying robots from the Matrix movies. This creature, with squid-like features, seized Colin with its tentacles, paralyzing him with its own blue light. Cornered by the alien, the group watched in horror as Jared too fell victim to its blue light. Suddenly, the building manager, Oliver, rammed into the alien with an SUV. With Jen's help, Oliver managed to extract Colin from the creature's grasp, covered in black goo and struggling for breath, however, to their dismay, the squid alien remained alive. A tentacle latched onto Colin's head, extracting his brain, brain stem, and part of his spinal column, and implanted it into its own head, seemingly recharging itself with the human brain like a new battery. Oliver has the keys to the building so he hurriedly opens an internal security door and the rest escape through it. As the group dashed out of the garage and past the swimming pool, heading for the back gate entrance of the building, they were ambushed by the two-legged alien stomper. It shot three sticky tongue-like appendages at them while stomping menacingly, and in the chaos, it ensnared Jen, engulfing her. To their dismay, they discovered a second stomping tanker approaching from the other side of the building, trapping them between the two alien threats. With no other option, Oliver shattered a glass door, and they hurried back inside, scrambling up the fire stairs to Terry's apartment to regroup and strategize. Jared, trembling and feeling immature, is consumed with guilt for not being able to save Terry. Meanwhile, Elaine is distraught that their attempted escape from the building resulted in unnecessary loss of lives, feeling that their actions were futile. As Candace lights a cigarette, Elaine, concerned for her unborn baby, urges her not to smoke, because she is pregnant. Elaine worries about the potential long-term effects of the vena blue light on their bodies and her baby's health, and upon examining his abdomen, Jared notices persistent vein markings. 
To secure their safety, Oliver and Jared barricade the front door and take turns keeping watch while the women try to rest, and they hang out there for the rest of the day. That evening, as they peer through the telescope, they witness the military engaging in combat against the tanker and Hydra aliens in the streets. However, a few hours later, their hopes are dampened as the water supply is cut off. As day two begins, the four survivors engage in a heated debate about their next course of action. Jared insists on making another attempt to reach the marina and locate Terry's motorboat for their escape. However, Oliver, Elaine, and Candace oppose this idea, pointing out the futility of escaping Los Angeles without a concrete plan. They emphasize the global scale of the alien invasion, highlighting the absence of news on television, radio, or the internet since yesterday morning. The group's debate halts abruptly as they hear the roar of flying jets overhead. Rushing to the window, with Oliver scanning through the telescope and the rest watching on the flat-screen TV, they witness a remarkable sight. All the other alien ships have vanished, except for one massive vessel hovering over downtown Los Angeles. The U.S. Air Force has launched a bold counterattack against the alien invaders. A squadron of several dozen unmanned Predator drones, armed with air-to-air -air Sidewinder missiles, escorts a handful of unmanned stealth bomber drones towards the colossal alien mothership. As they approach, hundreds of alien drones swarm out from the mothership, engaging in a massive aerial battle reminiscent of hornets defending their hive against a rival swarm. As the intense dogfight unfolds, most of the Predator and stealth drones meet their demise, leaving only a single surviving stealth bomber to launch a missile at the alien ship before meeting its own destruction. The missile strikes the alien vessel, triggering a cataclysmic nuclear explosion within the craft. A massive shockwave emanates from the blast, shattering the alien ship and sending it hurtling towards the ground in flames. Overwhelmed with relief, the group embraces and laughs in jubilation at the sight of the burning wreckage. However, their joy is short-lived as Jared peers through the telescope and witness a disturbing sight, from the ruins of the ship, bathed in an eerie blue glow, thousands of alien drones, tankers, and squid-like creatures emerge, swarming all over the city. As the smoke from the explosion dissipates, the group watches in disbelief as the shattered pieces of the alien ship begin to rise into the air, slowly reattaching themselves in a process of self-regeneration. Reacting swiftly, Oliver and Candace hastily secure sheets over the windows with duct tape, blocking out the blue lights emanating from the alien ship to protect themselves from its effects. Then, the group notices a military helicopter dropping soldiers onto a nearby building rooftop. Jared decides to take Elaine and heads to the roof, aiming to be rescued by the military. Oliver tries to stop them, even hitting Jared, but Jared becomes increasingly aggressive and displays veiny markings. He claims to feel empowered by the light and insists that he won't depart without his family. Despite Oliver's efforts to dissuade them, Elaine expresses her faith in Jared, and together, they leave for the rooftop. Candace notices the blue light from the regenerating ship through the telescope and gets affected, showing veiny marks. She opens the door and walks out, only to be captured by a squid alien climbing up the building. Despite Oliver's attempt to stop her, he fails and narrowly escapes himself. The squid alien, consuming Candace, gets destroyed by a rocket fired by the soldiers on the nearby building's roof. On the rooftop, Jared and Elaine discover that the soldiers are from a U.S. Navy fleet offshore. In the distance, near the ruins of downtown Los Angeles, the alien spaceship, surrounded by blue light, continues its slow repair. They witness a large aerial battle as U.S. Navy jet fighters engage stomping tankers and flying alien drones, with little success. A military helicopter they try to signal is destroyed by another tanker alien scaling the neighboring building. The tanker alien is knocked down from the building by a rocket fired by the soldiers, but it quickly recovers and resumes climbing toward the apartment. With the windows shattered and no means of escape, Oliver resigns to the hopelessness of their situation. He decides to take drastic action, turning on the gas stove and letting it blow up. As the tanker alien approaches and attempts to ensnare him with its tentacles, Oliver flicks a lighter, causing a massive explosion that engulfs both himself and the alien. 
Turning to retreat downstairs, they encounter a squid alien blocking their path in the stairwell, bursting through the fire door toward them. Jared attempts to fend it off with a fire axe while Elaine seeks to escape. In a desperate struggle, Jared manages to sever one of the squid alien's tentacles, only to watch in horror as it reattaches itself. The alien stabs Jared in the right leg, incapacitating him and preparing to consume his brain. As Jared writhes in pain, Elaine seizes the axe and hacks at the alien's brain. Despite the gruesome assault, the alien refused to die. Focused on Elaine, it ignores Jared momentarily, taking advantage of the distraction, Jared smashes the alien's head with a cinder block, and then with his bare fists, tearing out its black, gooey brain matter and membrane in a slow-motion struggle, seemingly ending its threat for good. Elaine and Jared find themselves trapped on the rooftop, surrounded by a horde of flying drones, squid, and hulking tanker aliens. Desperate for safety, they climb higher to find refuge. Suddenly, they encounter the burned remains of the tanker alien, the same one Oliver attempted to destroy by blowing up the apartment. In a moment of chaos, a F-22 fighter jet, struck by another flying alien drone, crashes into the burnt tanker, eliminating it just before it reaches Jared and Elaine. They end up lying on the helipad at the pinnacle of the building, exhausted and overwhelmed. Above them, the large alien ship, now fully repaired, ominously cruises overhead. With no hope left, they succumb to despair, both bearing the veiny marks of the alien influence. In a tender moment of resignation, they share a kiss and embrace as they are drawn up into the hovering spaceship. The scene transitions to a haunting montage of global cities lying in ruins, each overshadowed by menacing alien ships. From New York to London, Hong Kong to Los Angeles, the devastation is universal. The images portray the overwhelming reality, humanity stands powerless against the relentless onslaught of the alien invasion. On day three, Elaine awakens inside the alien ship, finding herself in a dark chamber covered in thick, black goo. The space is littered with dead bodies and tentacles, the latter having extracted the brains from the former. Tubes transport the brains deeper into the craft, while the headless bodies are discarded into a pool of liquid below. Amidst the grim surroundings, Elaine searches through the bloodied and gooey corpses, desperately seeking Jared. Just as she locates him, she witnesses his brain being extracted by a tentacled machine, leaving her devastated. As she faces the same fate, a tentacle realizes that Elaine is pregnant, prompting her to be drawn into a larger tube. The extracted brains are transported to a place where new, sloth-like creatures are formed, awaiting a human brain to inhabit. Most brains are blue-green in color, but one stands out as orange-slash-red, presumably Jared's. The alien entity receiving it convulses and becomes overtaken by Jared's consciousness. Elaine finds herself in a different chamber filled with other pregnant women, surrounded by tentacles that seem poised to harm her. The women around her scream in terror as they face unspeakable horrors. Just as Elaine braces herself for the worst, she hears Jared's voice. Suddenly, Jared in his alien form crashes through the wall, fighting off the tentacles and coming to Elaine's rescue. He touches her stomach, and they hear a rapid heartbeat, bringing a sense of hope. With his new, three-fingered paw, he strokes her face, and Elaine realizes that the alien is actually Jared. He lifts her up and holds her close as more alien tentacles converge on them. As the movie concludes, a series of still images unfold between the closing credits, portraying the new Jared courageously protecting Elaine and their unborn child from other menacing aliens. Eventually alien Jared defeats them, picks his wife up, and runs off with her into the bowels of the alien spaceship. Okay guys, that's all the recap about Skyline from 2010. Thanks for watching, see you again in the next video.